The kafala system also spelled kafala system Arabic enzim alkfalt nizam al kafala meaning sponsorship system is a system used to monitor migrant laborers working primarily in the construction and domestic sectors in Bahrain, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and the UAE. The system requires all unskilled laborers to have an in-country sponsor, usually their employer, who is responsible for their visa and legal status. This practice has been criticized by human rights organizations for creating easy opportunities for the exploitation of workers, as many employers take away passports and abuse their workers with little chance of legal repercussions, according to The Economist. The migrant worker's lot is unlikely to improve until the reform of the kafala system, whereby workers are beholden to the employers who sponsored their visas. The system blocks domestic competition for overseas workers in the Gulf countries. The Economist has also noted the positive economic impacts the Gulf system has had upon foreign workers and their families and home communities. Legal context and etymology In Islamic adoptional jurisprudence, kafala refers to the adoption of children. The original Islamic law of kafala was expanded to include a system of fixed-term sponsorship of migrant workers in several countries in the late 20th century. In the first decades of the 21st century, the migrant worker system became widely referred to in English as the kafala system. Bahrain Repeal In 2009, Bahrain was the first country in the Gulf Cooperation Council to claim to repeal the kafala system. In a public statement the Labour Minister likened the system to slavery. Changes to the labor market regulatory suggestion were made in April 2009 and implemented starting 1 August 2009. Under the new law, migrants are sponsored by the Labor Market Regulation Authority and can change from one employer to another without their employer's agreement. Three months' notice is required to quit from an employer, however, in November 2009 Human Rights Watch HRW stated that, "...authorities do little to enforce compliance." with employers who withhold wages and passports from migrant employees accountable practices which are illegal under Bahraini law. <inaudible> Saudi Arabia According to a 2008 HRW report, under the kafala system in Saudi Arabia, an employer assumes responsibility for a hired migrant worker and must grant explicit permission before the worker can enter Saudi Arabia, transfer employment, or leave the country. The kafala system gives the employer immense control over the worker. HRW stated that, Some abusive employers exploit the kafala system and force domestic workers to continue working against their will and forbid them from returning to their countries of origin and that this is "...incompatible with Article 13 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights." HRW stated that, "...the combination of the high recruitment fees paid by Saudi employers and the power granted them by the kafala system to control whether a worker can change employers or exit the country made some employers feel entitled to exert ownership over a domestic worker," and that the "...sense of ownership creates slavery-like conditions." In 2018, France 24 and ALQST reported on the use of Twitter and other online social networks by kafala system employers, kafis, to sell domestic workers to other kafis, in violation of Saudi law. ALQST described the online trading as, "...slavery 2.0." Several Indonesian domestic workers were executed in Saudi Arabia during 2015-2018. Sidi Zaneb and Karni were beheaded in April 2015. Mohamed Zaini Misson was executed in March 2018 for having killed his employer. On 29 October 2018, Tudi Salawat, also an Indonesian domestic worker in Saudi Arabia, was executed for having killed her employer, an action which she claimed had been in self-defense in relation to sexual abuse. 
Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi lodged an official complaint concerning the execution, which was carried out without warning and despite an appeal against the sentence. Qatar About 1.2 million foreign workers in Qatar, mostly from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and the Philippines, make up 94% of the labor force. There are nearly five foreign workers for each Qatari citizen, mostly housemaids and low-skilled workers. Most of the workers labor under near-feudal conditions that Human Rights Watch has likened to forced labor. Shuren Burrow, General Secretary of the International Trade Union Confederation, stated, In late 2010 we conducted a risk assessment looking at basic fundamental labor rights. The Gulf region stood out like a red light. They were absolutely at the bottom end for rights for workers. They were fundamentally slave states. An exit visa system prevents workers from leaving the country without the sponsor's permission. Employer consent is required to change jobs, leave the country, get a driver's license, rent a home or open a checking account. Amnesty International witnessed workers signing false statements that they had received their wages in order to have their passports returned. The organization called for an overhaul of the sponsorship system. Arab American businessman Nasser Baden described their situation as, Foreign workers in Qatar are modern day slaves to their local employers. The local Qatari owns you. International media attention increased after Qatar was named the host of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. The kafala or sponsorship system practiced by GCC nations has been stated as the main reason for abuse of the rights of low income migrant workers. Little discussed is the fact that high income professional expatriate workers are also deeply affected by the abuse of the system by companies. A confounding issue is that many of the companies are based out of Western nations from the EU, and the US. The most typical form of abuse by these companies is the refusal to release employees once their employment has ended with the company. This lack of release, typically through a no objection certificate or NOC, restricts employees from moving to another company in Qatar after employment has ended with the present employer. This prohibition executed by the company will keep the typical employee from working in Qatar for two years beyond the time their employment ended. In worse cases, the company holds the employee indefinitely in an effort to extort money from the employee when business opportunities fail. From the highest executives to the lowest secretaries, this policy is damaging and serves as a constant threat over the employee. On the 13th of December 2016, the Qatari government has introduced a new labor law, which it says will bring tangible benefits to workers in the country by abolishing the kafala system. The new regulations, aimed at making it easier for migrant workers to change jobs and leave the country, came into effect beginning on that day. However, Amnesty International characterized the reforms as inadequate and continuing to leave migrant workers at the hands of exploitative bosses. United Arab Emirates The United Arab Emirates has a visa sponsorship system to issue work permits for foreign nationals who wish to migrate and work in the UAE. Most of the visas are sponsored by institutions and companies, but individuals with Emirati nationality can also choose to sponsor the visa of a foreign worker who wishes to immigrate to UAE for work. The right of alien residence and work permit is protected by the UAE Federal Law No. 6 of 1973 on the entry and residence of aliens. Topic: <laughs> Abuse of domestic workers. In October 2014, Human Rights Watch estimated that there were 146,000 female migrant domestic workers in the UAE whose visa was sponsored by employers in the UAE. In an interview with 99 female domestic workers, HRW listed abuses claimed by their interviewees. Most had their passports confiscated by their employers. In many cases, wages were not fully paid, overtime up to 21 hours per day was required, or food, living conditions or medical treatment was insufficient. 24 had been physically or sexually abused. 
HRW criticized the UAE government for failing to adequately protect domestic workers from exploitation and abuse and made many recommendations to the UAE, including repeal or amendment of federal law No. 6 of 1973 on the entry and residence of foreigners, so that domestic workers can decide on their own to change between employers without losing their immigration status. UAE Domestic Workers' Rights Bill In June 2017, the UAE adopted a new bill to bring the country's labor law into consistency with the International Labor Organization's Domestic Workers' Convention, providing migrant domestic workers with the same labor protections as other workers in the UAE. The bill requires employers to provide domestic workers with accommodation and food and provides them with 30 days of annual paid leave and daily rest of at least 12 hours. It also guarantees 15 days of paid sick leave, 15 days of unpaid sick leave, and compensation for work-related injuries or illnesses. The bill sets out a weekly rest day but permits the employer to make the domestic worker forego the rest day if paid. The act of confiscating passports is illegal and against UAE law. Lebanon A kafala system exists in Lebanon. There have been reports of abuse by employers, such as confiscating passports and sequestration. There are also reports of high suicide rates among domestic foreign workers. The government is generally perceived as being lax in protecting the human rights of migrant workers. See also Exit visa Illegal emigration Migrant workers in the Gulf region Migrant workers in the United Arab Emirates Migrant domestic workers in Lebanon <laughs>